this guy got uh, solar panels installed by Tesla and it has a major issue. Essentially when the snow covers these panels and it starts to warm up as like to say the, the sun is coming up over the mountains, it heats up the panels and the snow just avalanches off. Kind of crazy. So today I'm gonna install a product. It's my first time using it. Seems to be like the only problem or the only product that fixes this problem on the market. Um, but it's called Snow Dog from Alpine. Alpine Snow Guards, I believe. They're out east, like Virginia or something like that. So what the plan is, based off of how this Tesla system's installed, is to hit each corner and then to put one in the middle. Can you toss me one of those brackets? And I don't know what size nut it is on that. It looks like a quarter inch or like a three eighths or something. Small. But essentially, the product has this little tab. It's made to fit in between the gap. Oh, that's nice. It has a lip right here on it. That lip can kind of go between there. Oh, yeah, it fits on there nice. Just place it on the roof like that, screw it in, and then it's going to make it so when snow builds up, it kind of has something to cling onto and melts rather than just sliding off avalanche style. So the biggest issue with installing these is solar panels are like pretty fragile um, and you shouldn't walk on them. But what happens is the the wafers inside of them, the silicon wafers, the cells and the solder points, when you step on them, it could cause like little teeny fractures in the solar panel, but the panel will still work and you won't know. It's just like five, 10, 20 years later, it's going to kind of just ruin that connection and you can have issues in the long term. So got the first few of these in, um, and they kind of show you the technique we've learned from it and feedback on the product itself. But uh, just going at the bus bar in the middle and then sliding these over a little bit, to move the first cell line. Um, it's nice because of the panels usually have like a uniform cells on it. So you can kind of line it up with the cell and then keep them all even as they're going up there. I'm gonna go up there, slide down with a rope, and then kind of show you how I'll install these. So this really seems like the only way to do this. Essentially tying off and then kind of sliding down. You can see on these solar panels that there's these mounts and that's where like the panel is gonna be the strongest. You don't wanna like put a lot of weight in the middle of the panel. I'm kind of sitting right on the frame of the panel and trying to like distribute my weight a little bit more so you're not damaging these cells <laughs> but I'm gonna slide down there I'm going two 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 and I'll kind of put those on show you how I put these little brackets in <laughs> last ones right there oh. It's like, yeah, the thread's going to get jammed up on that one. It's supposed to be jammed up. So if you spin this too far, you spin it the wrong way or something under here, you'll lose this piece, and then you're kind of screwed. But what I found you do is you can insert it like that, and then kind of play with the bracket until you know that that piece is perpendicular and then lean it back so it's grabbing on one side Suck it
slide it in there, kind of spin it. I saw that kind of stick in there just right. We'll line it up with the splice right there. There's a little groove right here that kind of sits on the panel. Line it up right there. Tilted it back. Do it. I don't know what the torque spec is on this. There we go. So review on this product using it, a uh, few things um, like design wise, if you if you over, if you spin this, it'll spin off and then it'll fall in between the solar panels and then there's like no way to go get it. And then the other thing is it's kind of hard when you're sliding, you slide it into the rail and then you want it to flip and it just flips so easy. And it seems like the technique is to kind of tilt it, kind of put it out of bind while you screw it in. But it seems like there should be a way to make this thing a little grippier um, maybe uh, like coarse on the top of it so it grabs the frame a little bit better because a lot of times it'll be tightening and it'll just slip up and pop back up. Um, but overall, a good product, um, reasonably priced. Um, I'll throw a link to it. Um, and I think these guys are the only ones that really make a product like this. Uh, a couple concerns about it is like the bracket itself shading the solar panels, like in the summertime. Um, they're pretty low profile for what they do but you can see right here how there's shade i don't know if you can see that there's shade kind of below the bracket the sun isn't very high in the sky and it's winter time obviously but i wonder how much that would change up production and then obviously like the solar panels themselves are rated for a certain snow load you're not supposed to put too much weight on them for you know what the attachments um are designed to hold and then this is going to keep the snow on top of it so you could potentially have some weight issues um so it might be smart to contact the manufacturer of your attachments for your solar panels maybe in the solar panels themselves um if you're worried about anything as far as voiding warranty or um some engineering uh errors i recently did a service call like further up in the mountains at the ski resort sundance and they actually had an entire like eight pack of solar panels ripped off their roof. It was just like the, the weight of the snow built up so high on it that it just, the whole system gave. So there, that's an extreme example, but I think there's some kind of um, things to kind of consider there uh, for the, you know, functionality and safety and all that for the system. So the customer wanted to kind of test out this product. So we didn't necessarily install these on the whole system. We just kind of put him in the areas that he was having problems. Like right below this section right here is a hot tub. And the hot tub kept on getting broken. And the cover got broken because of so much snow sliding off. We haven't touched this section. So it, it, it's kind of interesting me. Like some are doing a follow-up video where I can see if the production or anything was affected on the panels by having that clamp sitting there. Um, that snow retention clamp. Uh, because we have like some without some with so that's interesting and then um, There are wires that run underneath the solar panel So you kind of have to be careful not to like pinch a wire underneath of it but um, Basically got three across hit the middle and then just right inside those first like splices or clamps right there on those ones So this section's done um, a little bit hesitant about doing anything on the very bottom rail Zoom out a little bit 
So the, the very bottom section of the solar panel doesn't have anything. So that snow is just gonna slide, but at least you're not gonna have like five panels up. Um, just like all the snow sliding at once. So, um, yeah, because the solar panels that don't have, like this is going to affect production on your system. Like your system will produce less. Ruff, ruff. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's safety that matters. Like safety was the concern and then destruction of property, um, you know, and then just making a huge mess that's hard to clean up. So, so it's like the benefits outweigh the cons on it for sure. Had to run home and shower and get some dry clothes on. Um, this cold is killing me, but I wanted to contact the manufacturer, um, Alpine real quick and just ask them a little bit, a few more like technical questions about their product. And then that'll give you, you know, like my perspective as an installer and then the engineer's perspective. Um, and then you'll know what questions to ask or whatever, but let's call them up real quick. You may want to talk to my technical manager. Hello, um, this is could I see if he's available um, to talk? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Is there a way, like, do you have, like, certified manufacturers or any recommendations or resources for how to figure that? Because I, I can go do a physical ins inspection and be like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, the attachment spacing is this. Everything looks good. But I didn't know if there was any official way to do that. Uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, the array is either going to be designed to shed snow and use a reduction for a slippery slope factor or it's not and if it's not designed to use a reduction for a slippery slope factor then it should be designed to maintain the entire snow load most companies will not use a slippery slope reduction factor because it's possible that the snow will fall in one event and not slide off before it reaches the peak weight okay all right appreciate your time thank you certainly thank you brandon yep like that's interesting that's interesting so getting off the phone with them the the one thing like the major thing that i learned is that when you're doing engineering for a solar panel system um there's a uh, basically you're either engineering it for it to hold all the weight of the snow on the solar panels for whatever your snow load is in your area or you're saying it's slippery slope factor and the snow's just going to slide off and it doesn't need to be able to support that but that really, when you're doing engineering for that, that's the the rafter spacing and the structure of the home, not just the structure of the hardware. Um, so that's that's an interesting concern. But then again, if there it was snowing on the roof, like the roof would probably hold just as much or more snow on it. But you don't have the weight of the solar panels as well on the roof. So that's interesting and then configuration wise um they have quite a few uh resources just on their website for um installation guide and how many you need um the other thing is a, a lot of panels in this area are portrait and they're if you have rows that are stacked on top of each other um there might not be a gap in between the panels um that seems like it's it's like two portrait three landscape kind of hit the ends in the middle on a landscape but you might have to take panels like you might have to adjust all of your panels up in order for it to fit a gap so that you can slide that block on the end of that um, screw down through the panels so it might not be compatible with all types of racking and how people install um, or you might have to make some adjustments to your system so if you're buying some of these go check to make sure that there's a gap in between your, like a quarter inch gap between your panels where you want to put these, where you're not going to be able to install them. Um, and then if you were to just put them on the corners or something, if there's like a column gap rather than a row gap, it's it seems like there's not enough of these on the roof to actually be effective is what the gentleman was explaining. So interesting stuff, but uh, cool product, very unique. Um, Utah is kind of a weird market because it's like we get a lot of sun hours and it's like really nice summers. But like in these areas, you get all four seasons and you get quite a bit of snow up on the bench of the mountains. So if you live in a cold climate, you get some snow. It I think it it makes sense to at least install these where it might be over like a, a back door or a patio or a hot tub or 
or front door or something like that where it's dangerous to have snow just sliding off and and you know m making inconvenient making a mess or anything like that but thanks for checking out this video um hope this was helpful and there's a you know ton of other content um on my channel